Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at this uh, instrument cluster from a, a 2014 Toyota Hilux and the complaint is that uh, they'll be driving along and the engine will just die. Reason being, they've run out of diesel and uh, in that scenario the fuel gauge is reading half full. So that's quite a common problem for um, a lot of cars, inaccurate fuel gauge readings uh, can really mess up your day. So, we're going to pop it open and uh, I'll show you uh, why this happens and how to fix it. So first of all, to get this front cover off, we need to remove... Uh, we've got... Uh, looks like one, two... Uh, three, clip, three clips along the top and... and one there uh, one there, one there, and one there. So four along the bottom and a couple on the top. Uh, now we can remove this black shroud uh, and we do have to remove that because to get the back off this shroud keys in behind uh, the, cat, the release catch on the back shroud so we can't actually push that in to remove that until this is off as well. And to get that off, it looks like uh, we've got a couple of clips in the bottom and a couple of clips at the top. Now there's a clip there uh, and three clips down each side. Uh, it looks like so we'll pop them off and that should uh, take the back off. Oh, there's a couple of screws as well. So get them off and then the back should just pop off. Now with the back off, um, you can see what's going on. Uh, almost always most of the kit is on one side of the board. Uh, in this case, the parts we're looking for uh, all appear to be on this side, which is quite good because it means that we don't have to uh, pull the dials off, um, which it's pretty straightforward um, to do, uh, but you know, it's, it's less risk to the stepper motors, of course, that drive them. Um, but uh, generally speaking, uh, they're all different. Some of them, um, they all pull straight off. Uh, you just get something flat underneath and lift. Um, sometimes if you can't um, do it with just something flat like a spudger, um, one thing that works really good is a couple of teaspoons. Um, because of their shape, you can get a lip under each end and, and just sort of rock them and evenly pull up on, 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 on it instead of prying one side. It's actually a better way to do it, I've found. So a couple of uh, small uh, teaspoons. Um, but uh, what you want to do before you take these off is just put some, some tape, like uh, masking tape. Get some masking tape like that. Uh, tear off a little strip. Put it across here, across the zero mark, and then put that all the way down until you can't turn it. So um, this one stops at zero. Some of them will actually stop a bit below zero. Uh, when you turn them on, they'll come up to zero. Uh, so, you know, you'll throw the calibration out if the dead stop um, should be below zero, but you put it at zero, for example. So you want to put your tape on, bring the needle down, and then get a pen and just draw a line, right in line with the end of the needle. Um, and so when you put it back on, you want to push it down so it's back in line with that line um, once it's at the dead dead stop all the way anti-clockwise and then you'll know it's um, accurate. Um, not uh, so much important for uh, the rev counter, a TACO, because the engine RPM is, you know, you could be a couple, couple RPM out, but uh, speedo for sure, and your fuel gauge wants to be accurate too. So you can see in this one, they actually stop below the zero line or empty or cold so that's why you want to be sure to put it back in there because when you turn it on if, if the um if it's cold say it's going to come up to C, it'll come up a little bit like that and this will come up to here or uh, if it's an empty tank um or it may sit a bit below who knows but you know if you if you have that off uh you'll get a wrong tank level as well it'll it, it'll throw you off so but anyway we don't appear to need to do that this time which is good the area we're looking for is over here on the left side there we'll take you in for a closer look now when it comes to inaccurate fuel gauges um, one thing I've found is almost uh, always 
your fuel gauge signal is basically a res um, resistor divider to the sender unit. So um, you've got a signal, um, whatever voltage, from uh, here out to the fuel tank. The uh, resistor in the sender unit, uh, depending on the level, will um, uh, either eventually pull the signal right down to ground. So in order to do that we need um, some resistors at this end as well, uh, feeding the signal out so that we get a difference between the two and uh, they usually use these sort of large uh, high wattage resistors and uh, I'm uh, I'm not sure if these actually get quite warm when when the system's running um, but there's not a lot of discoloration in the board but uh, most definitely in this case what happens is the solder uh, breaks through, it cracks through on the edge of these uh, larger components and I'm not sure again, I'm not sure if it's because there's heat generated in them and they're flexing or if it's a total um, flex over time with heat cycles but um, that's generally what happens you don't notice it on, like these ones up here, they look fine, absolutely fine um, and then there's some uh, further over in the middle toward the right here um, so they look alright too so it's got to be a combination of maybe these get quite warm when they're running but anyway that's generally what you're looking for is these large type components resistors I mean if you don't have a microscope there's no harm in uh, soldering the ends of every single one uh, it'll take you a few minutes to go across the board and just resolder every resistor that'll cover your bases we'll show you uh, under the microscope what it looks like this angle is probably not going to really see uh, much, but we'll give it a shot. Maybe it will. Uh, we want to go right on in. Get both of my eyes synced up. You are looking synced up. Cool. All right. All right. Yep. No, near enough. Okay. So where these uh, fracture is right along along through here, probably about halfway up. You can kind of see on the one in the middle uh, the fracture there. Um, if you look more noticeably on the right hand end you can see there's like a little little bit of solder sticking out there and a, a kind of a cavity just under it and around the corners it's very pr prominent so you've got uh, uh, I need a finer tweezer if your depth perceptions all right right around that corner there it's uh, a little lifted around that end it is actually lifting so if I if I tip it up right so that's looking straight down on the end of it and uh, especially around the corners on each end is uh, quite a visible crack and she goes out of focus real easy if I move it so but um, yeah right through there you can see a crack right through the center there now I wonder if it would be even more obvious if I wash the flux off because there is some old flux on there Does it make it any more prominent? Yeah, not really, but I think you get the point. <laughs> you can definitely see a crack through there. So, and you can sort of see how the solder looks all kind of, I wouldn't say bubbled, but not smooth. It's it's rough in texture, that's for sure. What about the one next to it? How does that look? That one's a lot smoother looking. So that's what a good joint would look like. Not sort of bubbled out. Like that one. And the one next to that. That doesn't look so bad either. I would say that one's definitely broken. we flip it over to look at the other side of that bottom row that one is definitely broken 
you can see that horrible bubbling like look to it and there is a crack in the bottom in the right hand side and it runs all the way across and the one beside it is much the same the horrible bubbly appearance so um, do we have a really good condition uh, one here we go so there's one that is in perfect condition right there it's a nice smooth shiny appearance nothing wrong with that one at all and if we look down on top of one of these uh, broken ones you can see that really rough appearance there so I guess if you didn't have a strong microscope you could just look for that roughness and solder those ones up and uh, anything that was a lot smoother looking should be should be all right so let's uh, solder them up you'll probably find too that uh, if you were to heat the end one end of these and not the uh, cracked end you'll find that the whole component will probably just fall off the board uh, because of the uh, cracked through solder and I could probably show that uh, now which one do we think is bad that one there is definitely bad I think so if I hang on to it uh, it will probably come off the board unless I've got this glue under it no okay no, they, they probably don't so we'll heat that up and you can see it's loose there we go and that wasn't because it was hot enough to melt the other end you can see the texture of that solder it's um it's like it hasn't been attached for some time it's all gray and dulled and horrible yeah it looks like it hasn't actually been connecting for quite some time and it's a little bit oxidized and nasty now i wouldn't normally wick these all up but i will in this instance since i took it off because i want it to sit nice and flat when i solder it back on but as for the other ones we can get away with just uh, refreshing the solder where they sit If you are using a really hot iron, the heat can pass through these components and um, melt the other side as well. So if you're having trouble with that, um, either turn the heat down on the iron, or if you can't, once you've done one side, give it a few seconds to cool off and let the heat dissipate into the board um, so that uh, you, can, you can solder the other side without it coming away from you. I might be inclined just to do all of these resistors in the in the group um, just because it doesn't take long <laughs> it'll future proof the machine from uh, oh see there we go <laughs> okay that was broken at both ends well at least at least one end <laughs>
And there we have it. Look at those nice shiny joints. So I will quickly look over the rest of the board and see if any of the others are in need of uh, maintenance, but I don't think so. That's generally it. They're usually grouped in one area when it comes to fuel gauge uh, input signals and output signals and so forth. And as we saw in the video I did for the Nissan, uh, same thing basically, except uh, it wasn't in the dashboard, it was in a separate module. And assembly is just putting it together in the reverse order. So I hope that video was useful for you. You should be able to take that knowledge now and expand it into other models of uh, instrument cluster uh, and I'm sure you can resolve that problem uh, in almost any vehicle. Thanks for watching.